months ago, I made a video called Trans Women Are Not Biologically Male, in which I detailed why biological sex is a social construct, how it is an inaccurate and outdated classification system, and how it harms trans people. To the surprise of nobody, that video got a bunch of backlash, so I thought I would expand on some of the points, address some of the criticisms, and let's be honest, probably not get anywhere and probably have a very similar backlash to this video, but I gotta try, right? So if you didn't say so much bullshit, Riley, people wouldn't call you out on it. Welcome to Dr. Fluffy in today in cleaning the litter box. Riley Dennis ah, keeps pushing the line. Let's see the amount of bullshit about to come from this man's mouth. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. I'll link it in a card up here and down in the description. It'll be like a prerequisite to this video, and I'll try not to cover too much of the same stuff. So, biological sex. If thousands of trolls on Twitter are to be believed, it's an objective scientific fact that is inherent in nature. But if scientists are to be believed, it's a human-made classification system for storing organisms based on their reproductive ability. When Wrong. It is not a human-made concept. It is a concept that is ingrained in the DNA of every species. And in case of mammal species, it's a binary system because we have XX chromosomes that produce eggs and we have XY chromosomes that produce sperm. It's a simple concept. It's not humans that determine this. It's nature that determines this. And this is how evolution determined biological sex. So I, I, I always love how you say that scientists agree with you with I know no scientist disagrees with any of the bullshit that you have stated ever in your fucking channel. People say that biological sex is objective or is a fact. What they really mean is that the stuff that biological sex describes is objective. Like there are multiple scientific models for understanding biological sex, but the most widely agreed upon one has five criteria. Genitals, gonads, hormones, secondary sex characteristics, and chromosomes. All of those are determined by your chromosomes. So in reality, there's only one determining factor of sex. The chromosomes. All the others result from the chromosomes. But looking and we determining what is the sex of the person, we should look at the other four factors because those are the superficial things that we see as a result of the chromosomes. But in the end of the day, we can go directly to the source and look at the chromosomes. These five things are measurable. They are facts. You can look at a person and measure these things. But the fact that we group all five of these together under one classification system called biological sex, that's our own invention. That's a human-made model for understanding and classifying bodies. In nature, these five traits exist, but we as humans have decided to lump them all together and call them one thing. That's what we... No, you fucking idiot! We didn't decide to call them one thing. They are the result of one of those things. All of the other four things that you mentioned are the result of the chromosomes. And they have a reason to be the way they are. It's all because of reproduction. Females have secondary sexual characteristics to attract males. That's the purpose of those sex secondary sexual characteristics. Besides, of course, you know, the boobs also produce milk to feed the child. It's important, it's necessary for the continuation of the species. So is the hormones. The hormones exist in the way that they exist as part of the function of both sexes. The difference that we see in hormones are pretentious to the production of then the gametas. All of these things are correlated, they cannot be separated. They make one classification and one classification alone and that's not determined by us humans, it's determined by evolution. Constructed. Like chromosomes themselves are not social constructs, but deciding to call XX chromosomes female and XY chromosomes male is a social construct. No, no it is not. It's a binary model and we use the name female and the name male to describe. That's not a social com that's just language. But you have a binary model. You have one organism that produces sperm, we call it the male, and then we have an organism that produces an egg, we call it the female. Binary model, it's a key and a hole, both fit together to produce a baby. Binary model, it's simple. I'm not saying that classifying things is wrong or that we shouldn't try to understand bodies at all, but I do think we can do it better. So I'm simply asking the question if our current model of classification for biological sex is the most up-to-date, relevant, useful model out there. Science evolves. Frameworks and systems we used just decades ago have changed fundamentally since then. It's our job to be skeptical and change our frameworks as our society changes. And society you did a nice trick there, but uh, it will not pass. Because you said, oh, science changes over time. Yes, it changes with evidence. Then you skip to, oh, society is changing. Uh, science does not change because of society. Science 
changes because of scientific discoveries. And no scientific discovery has put in jeopardy the binary model. On the contrary, the more we study it, the more we understand we need a female and a male to reproduce. Everything else is just genetic errors, it's mutations, it's illnesses. It's, it's basically human beings with defects. Do you understand that? Do you understand that birth defects occur and in nature? You know what happens to those birth defects? They get eliminated by the gene pool. Do you understand that? We are not changing the classification of human beings because of a percentage that is much lower than 1% of birth defects. Is changing. We're becoming more aware of and educated about intersex people and trans people, and that's fantastic. But with this new awareness and knowledge, we might need to shift the language we use and readjust the old frameworks that we designed before we had this awareness and knowledge. No, we don't. We need to accept, okay, these people exist, they have these health issues, and we should not discriminate them. But that does not change the fact that's what they are. They are people with illnesses, with birth defects. They are not new genders. There are still only two genders, two biological sexes. Those people were just people who unfortunately were birthed with birth defects with illnesses that make them well defective in a way do you understand that it doesn't change the classification at all especially when they are less than 0.3 percent of the human population that's nothing that is nothing you have a much other birth defects that are much more prevalent in human beings so when I say biological sex is a bad classification system, what exactly does that mean? Like, what in particular am I criticized? Basically, our traditional understanding of biological sex says that there are only two groups and everyone fits neatly into either one or the other. Yes, there is only two groups. That doesn't mean they fit neatly in them. Because illness exists. We understand that illness exists. But you only still have two groups, even if you don't feel fit that well in either of them. Illness exists malformations exist defects exist we're sorry that's not our problem that's not going to change the classification when you ask people who support this framework how we sort people into these two groups the answers are varied lots of people say it's by genitals people with penises are male people with vaginas are female others say it's by chromosomes people with xy are male people with xx are female others say it's based on perception someone who looks like a woman is female someone who looks like a man is male and except that last group the other groups are correct are completely correct first of all what really determines in which group you are is your chromosomes. End of conversation here. It's your chromosomes, then we look at the other characteristics because we most of the time don't look at the chromosomes. For the single case of intersex people, sometimes the exterior can trick you, can be deceiving. That's when you have to look at the chromosomes. That's when you have to look at which of the chromosomes is vestigial, where is the defect in. Then you have Trans people. Trans people suffer from a mental illness, a mental disorder called gender dysphoria. Biologically, they are from one sex. Their brain believes they are from the other sex. And we as a society, after they do the transitions, decide to accommodate this belief because that's the treatment we know so far. But that doesn't change the reality. Truth is, there are biological ways of determining someone's sex, and then there are the ways we actually do it in real life. The Miller Keen Encyclopedia and Dictionary of Medicine, Nursing, and Allied Health, published in 2003, says that sex is a distinction based on the type of gametes produced by an individual. Gametes are reproductive cells. Under this traditional definition, males produce sperm and females produce eggs. So that's a biologist's way of determining the sex of a person or organism. But we don't test everyone's gametes at birth. In fact, we don't even test chromosomes. A doctor simply looks at the baby's genitals and makes a determination based on whether it looks like a penis or a vulva. The reason for that is that it's a quick, easy way of making an educated guess about other aspects of the baby. If they have a vulva, they probably have ovaries, XX chromosomes, and will develop female secondary sex characteristics at puberty. Do you understand that you just read something that immediately contradicts what you said in the beginning? That the science agrees with you and not the opposite view? Oh my god, you're so fucking dumb. Um, it's an educated guess because it's the cheapest guess and 99.92% of the time is correct. Think about that. For a moment, 99.92% of the time is correct. That's basically always. It is always set right. Every time the doctor looks at the genitals, is right. The few times he is wrong because of intersex conditions, 
that's like that's almost like a miracle. You know, I have almost more chances of winning the lottery than a doctor being wrong when uh, when he determines someone sex through the genitals. Because again, it's all connected. The chromosomes produce the systems in the organism to produce the gametes, to produce the secondary sexual characteristics, the primary sexual characteristics, the sexual organs. Everything is determined by your chromosomes and it's all interconnected. In an almost perfect system, that sometimes 0.018% of the times is prone to errors. In the case of trans people, it's not even those systems that produces the error. It's a different system in the chromosomes that produces error, not in the sexual reproductive system, but in the brain. Wait, however, an educated guess is still a guess. Doctors don't test your gametes as soon as you're born. Plus, there are other kinds of biological sex. That same dictionary also lists chromosomal sex, endocrinological sex, donatal sex, sex hormones, morphological sex, and nuclear sex. All of those are the results of the chromosomal sex. They are not separate things. They are all connected. <sighs> I Seriously. Ignorant people about biology should not talk about biology. Please translate roughly into the five categories I mentioned earlier. Genitals, gonads, hormones, secondary sex characteristics, and chromosomes. Now, let's say you're a doctor and you want to determine someone's sex. You see that they have female genitals, you measure their hormone levels and see that they have high levels of estrogen and low levels of testosterone. You see that they're short and don't have a lot of body hair, and they have breasts. You might conclude that this person is female. But if you investigated a little further, you would find that this person has XY chromosomes and they don't have ovaries. The person is a trans woman. They have traits of being both a female and a male under the traditional definition. So what do you classify them as? Better yet, how do you treat them? Do you treat them like a female patient and give them the same medical advice you would give any other woman? Or do you treat them like a male patient and give them the medical advice you would give a man? The truth is our Interesting point. I am not a medical doctor, I'm a biologist, but, but let me put myself in his shoes. I would treat him as a male patient, because that's what his, his organism is. The rest of the characteristics you named are being forced into that male body, meaning that most of the illnesses will still react to the male body, not to a female body, because it's not a female body. All of those things are being forced into that body. The hormone levels, the fake uh, genitals. It's not a real vagina, so I cannot treat it as a real vagina. It probably still has vestigial male organs, so it can still catch diseases related to those vestigial male organs. And the difference to susceptibility to certain illness that are different for male and for female probably still apply so yeah I I'll probably be nice yeah yeah it's a trans woman but it's biologically a male so I have to treat him as a male our medical system is awful at dealing with trans people right now. Lots of doctors don't know what to do with us. Trans people are largely out there figuring out their own health problems because so many doctors are confused by the very concept of us. Medically speaking, people assigned male at birth and people assigned female at birth tend to have slightly different medical needs. But the reasons for those different medical needs aren't always the same. For instance, the American Cancer Society recommends that people with prostates talk to their doctor about being tested for prostate cancer around age 50. That means the recommendation applies to cis men, but not cis women. However, it also applies to trans women, but not trans men. And it may apply to non-binary people as well. And this is assuming that nobody has had a prostate removed because of prostate cancer. Because a cis man or a trans woman could possibly not have a prostate if they had previously had a prostatectomy. So in this case, the relevant information the doctor needs to know is do you have a prostate? But the American Cancer Society also recommends that people who have breasts be tested for breast cancer starting at age 45, and breasts are something that a lot of trans women develop after starting hormone replacement therapy. There are also a lot of trans men who have breasts who never have them removed. So the breast cancer screening recommendation can really apply to a wide range of people, cis women, trans women, trans men, or non-binary people. In this case, the relevant question to ask is, do you have breasts? And here's the problem with our current binary view of biological sex. If someone walks into your office and fills out a form and checks M or F, you as a doctor are going to make some assumptions about This video is too long and I'm not going to waste more time with this stupidity, but I'm going to address this last. Doctors treat males and treat females. Then you have health conditions like gender dysphoria that cause people to transition their gender. All of that should be in the record, in the medical record. A doctor should know that he's treating a male that transitioned to a female because they have gender dysphoria. They should know all the treatments that the person has. That way they are already aware of what they, what they need to treat. Your problem here, Riley, is that you're trying to make it another classification when it's not. It's already a pre-existing illness. That's what the doctor needs to treat. Uh, so if you want me to respond to the rest of the video, say something, maybe I will. But I think it's useless because I think I already made my point. If you have something to say, don't forget to tell me in the comment section. Like and share the video. Subscribe if you like my analysis. Stay fluffy.